In this video, we introduce basic thermodynamics as a framework to predict whether or not certain reactions take place, and if they do, to what extent this happens. Thermodynamics generally consider changes in energy states after and before a transformation. Imagine that you are in a building and climb from an initial floor 2 to a final floor 5. The number of floors you climbed is 5 minus 2 equals 3. If the floor considered 0 had been chosen at the top of the building, you would be climbing from floor minus 6 to floor minus 3. The number of floors climbed would be minus 3 minus minus 6, which is equal to 3 as before. This is a very important result because it eliminates the role of the arbitrary choice of a reference level. In a similar way, by dealing with energy changes, thermodynamics downplays the arbitrary question of the reference state. To describe energy changes during a transformation, we introduce three important state functions, the Gibbs free energy, G, the enthalpy, H, and the entropy, S. They are related by the equation G equals H minus T, S. More specifically, we generally refer to changes of these properties between a final and an initial state. So we should write this as delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. Let's consider the Gibbs free energy and start from a value G initial higher than the final one G final. Such transformations have a negative delta G and are defined as spontaneous. The natural tendency of systems is therefore to reduce their free energy. You can think about this by analogy to placing a ball on a slope. Its natural tendency is to roll down to the bottom. In thermodynamics, such processes are called spontaneous and can take place without an external intervention. For example, an ice cube should spontaneously melt above zero degrees Celsius. In contrast, non-spontaneous reactions require an external intervention to take place and are characterized by a positive delta G. Whether spontaneous reactions really take place or not depends on kinetics. To learn more about kinetics, watch the videos on that subject. If the initial and final free energies are equal, delta G is zero, and the system experiences a dynamic equilibrium. For more information on dynamic equilibrium, please check the corresponding videos. The second property to consider is enthalpy. In chemistry, enthalpy changes are associated with the breaking and the formation of bonds. This tells us whether a reaction is exothermic or endothermic, respectively whether it releases or absorbs heat. The burning of wood is an exothermic reaction, as all combustion reactions. Its delta H is negative because its final enthalpy is lower than its initial one. In contrast, endothermic reactions absorb heat and have a positive delta H. Water evaporation is an example of such an endothermic process, and this helps regulate our body temperature by sweating when we exercise or have fever. The last thermodynamic property we introduce is entropy. In its simplest sense, it can be understood as a measure of disorder. To understand this, imagine a large bowl of white rice. It is very easy to add a colored grain and mix it in. However, it is much more difficult to remove it afterwards. Mixing the grain in or taking it out does not involve enthalpy changes 
because there is no making or breaking of bonds. Delta H is therefore zero. However, mixing in the grain increases this order, so the entropy increases. This means that delta S is positive and delta G negative, making it a spontaneous and therefore effortless process. On the contrary, removing the grain implies a negative delta S and a positive delta G. The process requires an effort and is non-spontaneous. In summary, we have seen that thermodynamics generally refers to changes in energy states between final and initial states. The energy state variables of free energy, enthalpy and entropy are useful in defining the nature of these changes. Free energy changes tell us whether a reaction is spontaneous or not, while enthalpy changes tell us whether it releases heat or not. Dynamic equilibrium is reached when the free energy change is zero.